Hello again, and we have a skier problem here now. Um, okay, so it says a skier starts from a uh, rest at the top of a hill. The skier coasts down the hill and up a second hill, as the drawing illustrates. The crest of the second hill is circular, with radius of r equals 42 meters. Neglect friction and air resistance resistance so what must be the height h of the first hill so that the skier just loses contact with the snow at the crest of the second hill well what the heck does that mean well it means that when the skier um is at the apex of this hill that means he his normal force has to equal has to equal the 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 gravitational force because when you're when you're when you're scooping down like that your normal force is going to be greater than the gravitational force because um this is this is another circle here so so since normal force is acting as the centripetal force here um it, it has to be greater than the gravitational force in order for the skier to turn like turn like that but right here the normal force is acting against the the um the centripetal force and only centripetal force acting on here is the gravitational force so so the normal force has to equal the the gravitational force so let's draw a free body diagram for the skier here so we have a mg gravitational force and and our normal force mg So how fast must must um, must this guy be moving in order to in order to do that? Well, mv well it's gonna be mv squared over r is gonna be our is is gonna be our representation for the for the um, the circular. Let me let me get a drink of water. Real quick. Yeah, so so m cancels out here. So g is equal to v squared over r. All right. So now now <coughs> now um let's let's look over here on this side. On this side, we, we know that Ke plus Pe is equal to Ke plus Pe. Or Ke1 plus Pe1 is equal to Ke2 plus Pe2. So we're going to say that this is K Pe2 and this is K1. This is 1 and this is 2. So height is the only difference. So Ke, well, he's starting at rest, so it's going to be 0. And potential energy is going to be just MgR. M, or MGH is equal to Ke2, which is going to be here. It's, it's going to be his, and this is going to be mv squared over 2 plus Pe2, which is going to be, this is going to be 0, actually, because we're going to say that this horizontal is going to be 0. So here m cancels out as well. So g times height, g times height is equal to v squared over 2. Okay, well, let's solve for g. So g is equal to v squared over 2h, right? Hey, look at that. Um, we, we have equal thingies. So now we can, we can just say, we can just say that v squared over 2h is equal to v squared over r because they're both equal to g so they they must be equal to each other okay so now let's um let's cross multiply so 2h 2h times v squared is equal to r v squared and v squared cancels out 
because on in 2h is equal to r and r is 42 meters so h is just 42 divided by 2 so because you if you divide by 2 on each side you get h so 42 divided by 2 so h is just 41 meters 40 or 21 meters And that is how you get the answer for this question. So basically, it turns out that it's, you just divide this, whatever the radius was, by 2.